in this uh, video we will be developing a small to do app in which we will be using the text input the scroll view touchable opacity we will be creating our own component custom component we will see that how we can send the props uh, from the parent component to the child component we will be maintaining the react hooks and these are the few concepts that we have learned we will combine those concepts and we'll learn some new concept in uh, development of this to do app so uh, briefly i just show you that how this uh, app works so i can input the item and uh, i can add this item and i can also remove the items from the list and when i add add items so this is the uh, scroll view list and uh, i can uh, uh, add the items and the list will grow and will be ha having a scroll on this uh, uh, scroll view so let's see how we develop such kind of basic uh, react native application so let's create a blank expo cli or react native cli project first we need to have uh, input and a button to take user input so i will use text input text input component is used to take user input and you see that this component has been added automatically over here and i also need to have a button as well and uh, for the button uh, component i need at least the title prop otherwise i will receive an error so if i save this and uh, it's refreshing and you see that the title prop of a button must be a string so title prop is missing so let's for example add is a is a is the title of the button and uh, you don't see a text input over here because there is a text input and hidden somewhere so i'm looking for it on the left side but uh, if you remember that uh, the uh, the placement of elements uh, or the flex direction is by default is column so the text input would be on the top of this button over here and you see that when i uh, tap over here uh, it's moved uh, upward and uh, it's not hiding the view when the keyboard has just opened so anyways so let's uh, uh, have some styles and modify some styles for uh, this container so I would like to have a container for this text input that should be a separate T and I can call it like style styles dot let's say input container so I will add a container over here for input which is an object itself and the first thing I'm going to do is flex direction so flex direction should be uh, row so that I can see that side by side so on the left side there must be a text and on the right side there must be a button and uh, let's increase the size of uh, this text box uh, text input so add some style and I will use a style sheet so uh, call it text input so in text input I will uh, increase the uh, font size and add some button and the width and so on so I will add a border color uh, that can be any color that can be hexadecimal value and uh, if I save this uh, you don't see any border over there because border has a color but border has no width so I need to assign a width so that you see the border and now they are very close and uh, uh, I can add the width as well so let's say for example if I say that uh, it's consuming 80% width so if I say that the width has been increased and uh, 80% is too big so let's make it 60 
and I want to add spaces between this uh, flex uh, so so I need to justify the content so justify content is on the main axis of uh, your flex so in this case the flex is is the is the, ho is the horizontal flex uh, the flex direction is row so I need to justify content and I say that I need to add a space between the elements uh, of uh, this container so I need to add some space and I also need to assign the width because uh, uh, it's not congested and uh, it's actually connected and occupying the space of the space uh, occupied by the uh, its child elements so if I increase the width of this uh, this container would increase or expand so if I predefine the uh, the width of this uh, input container which is view so it will be occupying the 80% of the available space of the parent container and the parent container has not specified any of the space so it's 80% so now I have this uh, container and then we have a space uh, out of 80% 60% is consumed by this one so I can actually reduce this to 70% and uh, out of 70% it's occupying 60 so let's give it 70 <coughs> so now uh, out of 100% I'm giving 70% to this one and this is for the button and I also need to move this uh, above so before doing that I will add a nice title over here and then we'll do other things so now let's add uh, text above this and uh, I can add a style for this one as well and I can call it styles dot title and I can add a title over here so first add some text so that we see that what do we want to display so I will increase the font size to let's say the very big and uh, uh, the color can be like light gray and uh, uh, the thing is that uh, it's justifying content uh, on the main axis to the center so if I don't justify the content so it's actually occupying or the displaying from the very start so I can add a padding on the top so let's say for example uh, 30 so some padding has been added over there and I can even increase it to let's say 40 like this and I can do whatever I want to just to uh, justify and fix this and uh, about the designing of this uh, text input mm, we can uh, work a bit more on this so let's for example if you want to have a rounded border so we can have a radius so we have a border radius over here and uh, by having a, a border radius we can actually uh, make the curved uh, input so let's say for example make it a bit circular uh, and also we can increase the font size to make it let's say 16 and uh, I cannot see the text so I can actually use a placeholder so text box or the text input uh, react native component has another property which is a placeholder and the placeholder can be any string so enter item and this can be a self closing tag 
so enter item and you see that uh, it's uh, very much connected with the edges and I can put some padding in this to to give some spacing between the displaying text and this one I can also have it style to have a, a border on the bottom only so let's say for example border bottom width so let's say for example like this I can give the bottom width only and then I definitely don't need this uh, border circle because uh, it's a curve and I can also make it something like this and you have noticed that this add button has been stretched because uh, the div has been st stretched so because of this that uh, this add button uh, is being stretched because it's uh, taking the space available over here so we can also fix this to fix the button uh, it's consuming all the space uh, in this uh, uh, view so uh, and the flex direction is row and its width, width has been increased because we had a padding over here so uh, we use justify content which is a uh, is a, is a property to adding some spaces and aligning the content on the main axis so in this uh, input container the main axis is the horizontal axis so this this is our main axis and uh, for the uh, cross axis or the opposite axis we can use align items so initially uh, you see that it's stretch so which means that we have uh, some properties and the stretch is the one which is by default applying on this button so if I want to put this on the center uh, of this available space so it would be on the center and if I say that it should come and start from the beginning of the uh, flex so I can use the flex start so it would be at the top of this uh, div and I can use the flex end so it would be at the bottom and would be aligned with this uh, uh, this uh, bottom border of this text input so let's say for example depending on what kind of UI we want to achieve we can use these options to justify content and align the items so this is sometimes a bit confusing and you we can actually do this in this way uh, so let's uh, move on and uh, take some user input and display some text somewhere on our uh, this uh, view of this small react native application so to take the user input and uh, display it somewhere let's assume that we are going to display it in uh, a kind of a view and inside that view we have a text and we want to display this over here in inside this text so we need to use the react hooks uh, in this case we are using a function based component so we are not using a state object in this we will use the react hook and uh, as soon as user type in because we don't have a variable and object name for this text uh, input we don't have an, any id so that we can access it and display that we need to use the react hook so that as soon as user type in we update the react hook and then we display the text so uh, for this for react hook i will use let's say for example get input text and set input text or set text so get text and set text and i will use with the help of use state and this has been added over here when as soon as i entered so let's say for example i add dummy text over here and uh, if I use this get text getter of this react hook if I save this you see a dummy text over here so let's increase uh, the, uh, the font size a bit so that you can clearly see So this is our uh, dummy text 
which will be displayed so as soon as I type uh, inside this uh, text box or the text input I will use on change text although we have a on change uh, event as well and on change text as well so on change text will be passing the text uh, to the argument to the callback function so we want to uh, because we want this and then we want to set this on change text would be used so I can pass on the text to the to the event let's say for example in this case I can directly call set text and I can pass on the whatever text is in the text box so let's add some text you see that as soon as I type uh, it's updating because I'm using a uh, react hook over here so as soon as I update this text with the help of on text change and uh, uh, I'm also retrieving with the help of uh, get text so which is uh, a getter of this react hook so uh, as soon as I change the text it's updating like this and we see the change so that's how actually we can receive or retrieve the text so next thing is that we need to add this text in a list so that we can see a uh, kind of list or I can actually wait for it to display this text so now we need to add the add button functionality and uh, I can add an event over here so let's add on press so on press can be a function an anonymous function over here and uh, I can use this function or create another function over here so let's uh, call it uh, add item so add item would actually receive or retrieve the item from the get text because as soon as we are typing it is setting the text sorry it is setting the text so it's setting the text so whenever I press the add button I should uh, get text and put it somewhere in a kind of list so that I can use that list to display the items so let's call this uh, add item or even I don't need this because in add item we are not passing anything so I'm just assigning the reference so that add, add item should perform so in add item I can actually console.log and see that what's uh, happening when I get text so let's input an item item one if I add and you see that in console.log I am receiving the item so let's assume that I am adding the item two so it's adding the item two another functionality I might uh, want to do this that as soon as I receive or retrieve the item I want to clear the the text of this uh, text input so I can also do this that as soon as I am done I set text to empty text all right and uh, this will remove this text so if I save this and if I press add you see that get text uh, gives us uh, the empty string but the thing is this, that this text has not been removed so to do this we can have a value property and in value property we can use get text so with the help of this we can display back the text whatever it was in the in the get text uh, react hook so item one so if I add it's clearing up the text 
that's how you can do this to add the item we need to add these items in a list that can be an array or a javascript array and we want to display that list over here uh, in a kind of uh, view over here that can be any uh, view we have uh, several options in react native so let's maintain a list of uh, these uh, items so i will use a uh, get list and set list and i will use the react hook and let's begin with an empty list so before beginning with an empty list i can just or i just want to demonstrate that how this list will look like so let's say item 1 and item 2 so by default uh, we have two items in a list and how do we want to display that list uh, we need to see that how we do this and uh, definitely we don't need this dummy text now so this items would be inserted in the list of uh, this state and uh, will be displayed so let's see how we can display that list somewhere at the bottom of this uh, dummy text uh, to display the list i can use a uh, scroll view so scroll view is one of the options available in uh, uh, react native uh, there are several options in uh, uh, react native uh, such as flat list is also one of those and this and the and the section list is also one of those so there's a difference between the scroll view and the flat list is that which one we should use and uh, when we, we should use so when we have exhaustive list where the list is very long and we don't know how long that would be we should go for the flat list because flat list will render the items depending upon uh, the on items which are displayed but scroll view will load all the items in it so first uh, start with the scroll view so in scroll view we want to put the items uh, in this scroll view Let's, for example if i add some text so some bigger text let's say font size make it uh, 46 let's say and let's add some font to new text like this and you see that uh, we have a lot of dummy text over here and now i must get a scroll over here like this so now uh, the items inside the scroll view uh, would have a scroll by default on the right side and I can scroll the items and scroll view actually starts from here and I can scroll it like this so that's how actually scroll view will look like so we want to display the list or the array over here in a scroll view so for each item we want to add and uh, a view for this and uh, we want to display it in that way so to do this i can get the list and i can use the javascript uh, function which is a map function so map function will be used to uh, map each element with its another callback so i will use this function and i will say that i will pass an item to another function which is a callback function and in this callback function i want to display some text so in this case i am displaying the item itself like this So you see that items are not displayed in the scroll view the reason is that i am using a uh, arrow function and in arrow function if uh, i am using the braces i need to return from uh, the function 
so if I return so I see the list and if I don't specify the parent uh, the braces uh, by default uh, arrow function returns uh, the statement so you see that it's uh, displaying over there similarly uh, if I want to kind of uh, decorate this or I want to work with this uh, use state and the list I first need to add the elements so when I am adding the elements with the add button I need to add this into the list so this is the fixed list uh, displaying the dummy data so to add the element I will use set list and set list is a, is a, is an array uh, that would be maintained as a state in um, react hook with the help of react hook so uh, I, if I say that I want to push the element uh, I cannot do this because uh, set list is an uh, is an object of uh, a list uh, of, of of array so to do this uh, I cannot do this I can bind and I can perform because set list is a method it's uh, and that that is setting the state and we are setting the state of an array so in this case I want to uh, set the list and I need to set a new list every time whenever I call this set list so to set a new list or add the items in the list I need to first access the items which are already in the list so to do this I can uh, uh, use the feature of uh, JavaScript in which I can access the elements with the existing elements and uh, I want to merge a new element in this which is inside get text so through the get text I am retrieving the element and I am actually merging the uh, creating a list with the help of uh, get list and all the elements of get list and I am creating a new list uh, with an appended item in this so if I save this and item 1 and item 2 is already in the list so if I add item 3 and if I press add so when I press add uh, the list has been uh, created again a new list is appended or uh, replaced with uh, from the existing list and uh, retrieving the element with which are already in the list and adding the new element so that's how actually we can add the elements in the uh, this uh, this list and with the help of scroll view we are displaying these elements and I'm just using text so let's decorate this list a bit so that it looks good and uh, the better way to decorate the items of this list I can wrap each element which is displayed or each, each element which will be displayed I can wrap it in a view and uh, with the help of view we can uh, decorate in a better way so let's do this and uh, I can add some style so let's call it styles dot scroll view item and I can create a style over here So in a scroll view item I can uh, add some uh, background color let's make it let's say orange and uh, I can increase the width to let's say for example 80% uh, of the displaying area and uh, I'm I want to apply this 80% but uh, we don't have any style on uh, the scroll view so we also need to add some styles on scroll view so styles dot scroll view so for each item we have a style and for scroll view we have some styles 
so for scroll view I will add let's say width to to 80% of the available space and we are getting all the space so this is the 80% of the space and let's make it 100% so scroll view is actually occupying the 100% uh, width and the width that is occupying the each uh, by the each item which is uh, the view in our case uh, it's 80 percent and uh, if i make it 100 percent as well so it will be displayed on the entire space so instead of doing that i would actually want to have it like 80 percent or maybe less and i want to move these items to the center of the scroll view uh, to do this I can uh, use another property uh, which is align self this property is used to uh, for the elements uh, where I want to align this element by itself so I want to align these um, items in the center of uh, this scroll view so I can do this in this way uh, let's add some spacing between the items because they are very congested so i will add some uh, padding and margins so let's say add some padding so that the content inside this uh, 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 this view should have some padding and i will add margin so that all the elements should be displayed with some margins like this and uh, i can also add some uh, uh, text property uh, to increase the text so I can add a style in this case uh, uh, let's let's create a style so stroll view let's say text so for the scroll view text I will add it over here and I will increase the font size to let's say for example 16 see that how it looks like and uh, maybe a bit bigger if you want to and font not font just the color and I want to make it white colored so like this and uh, I can have uh, like uh, curved borders on my view which is a div so to do this I can add uh, border radius of uh, 10 maybe so in this case I have a, a kind of rounded I can also increase it to make it like entirely circle items like this so it depends that how you want to do this and what kind of uh, output you are looking for <coughs> so add another item let's say item 4 we can remove this text um, it's also accepting the the empty as well so we also need to prevent that we'll see that how we can do this so let's say item 6 item So you see that we have these items we this scroll is uh, not displayed yet because we have total of 18 items so to quickly see that I can uh, increase the size of this text so now if I see that we have a scroll on the right and I can scroll these items I can increase the size uh, of this div a bit let's say maybe 90 percent of the area and these are the items that we have in the list so that's how I can do a little bit of uh, decoration and uh, let's make it 26 
so these these are the items which are actually displayed over here so you might have be seeing this uh, warning over here which is saying that each child in the list should have a unique key prop so which means that the scroll view to identify each uh, scroll view item scroll view actually looks for and uh, requests you to add a unique key prop so key prop is required for each child element let's say for example for the view i want to add a key so let's say for example if i add a key which should be uniquely identify each item so just for right now i can have a item itself as a key and uh, i will not uh, have any problem now i hope so so if i refresh this so you see i don't have any warning over here so the key problem has been solved but key must be a unique and if i add item 1 again now i have a problem that the key item 1 already exists and it must be unique so to do this uh, to solve this problem our array will not work like this which means that we need to have an object of array which should have a key and the value so so this this can be a value or this can be a data and we also need to have a key over here uh, as a key value pair and uh, this state would now maintain the objects instead of that so to do this i need to add when i am ad adding an element i need to add an object and to do that i can make it like this so that it's a bit clear so existing item and i want to add and merge with the key with the key and data or the item or the value so let's make in data and so key can be the first item so i can use math dot random dot random is a function i guess dot to string method to convert it into a string and now when i'm adding the elements i am generating a random key and the uh, data would have the text so which means which means which means that we should remove this because it's not having the key element so it's an empty array so now each each array element would have an object an object would be a key value pair and the first item would be key and the value and the second would be the data and the uh, the text that we want to display over here so that scroll view will not display any uh, error but over here in item in this case now it's an object having the key and the data uh, members in this so for retrieving the key i can use item dot key and displaying data i will use item dot data so just to display that what actually we are getting and retrieving as a key we can do this that i can say that this is key so key and uh, data is this one so if i refresh this so now we don't have any items so if i add item 1 so you see we have a, a random randomly generated key and we have a data and if i add another one 
I can also repeat that one so you see that this one is repeated as a data but we have a unique key every time generated uh, with the help of math dot uh, random uh, it's not a very perfect way of doing this because there is a slight possibility that this key can be generated again exactly the same key but there but there are very less chances for this so that's how actually we can use this and we can display data so now we can remove this and instead of having simple array now we are using the object and uh, we are uh, retrieving the object list and we are adding the new object every time when we are calling the add item func function so if i save this and now we have these items and uh, now we will not have this uh, unique uh, key problem over here right now we can add a functionality with the list uh, items which are displayed in a view so that whenever I tap any of the items the item is removed from the list how can I make this view items as selectable because these are not the buttons these are just view displaying this text I can wrap this around with the touchable opacity so touchable opacity is a react native component available which actually uh, is a is a touchable will make that area or uh, that component as touchable and uh, we can interact with it and we can also uh, implement the on press method to do anything and it will give us an effect of uh, an item which are actually touchable will give you the feedback uh, so we can use touchable opacity and we will wrap this view with touchable opacity so let's see if added over there no it's not added by itself so we need to add touchable opacity each child in a list should have a unique key prop now the problem this problem is appearing because we have a key uh, with the child of child so this key should be the the root element uh, which is a which is a child of the scroll view because we are having multiple touchable opacities so this is the uh, the root element of uh, all the child elements or the first element of the scroll view so we need to have a key with uh, this one so i can actually make it a bit cleaner so <coughs> we have a touchable opacity we have view and we have text so now this problem should be solved be resolved in uh, next load so add an item now we are not getting this error but you see that this is now touch up so if I tap any one of these you see these these are uh, touchable and giving us the feedback we can also reduce the opacity so active opacity uh, is uh, having a range let me see that uh, its default value is 0 0.2 so which means that we can assign uh, decimal numbers and uh, let's uh, change the active uh, opacity you see that the opacity has been changed because uh, initially it was like 0 0.2 and when I tap on this it just almost disappear and appear it again so if I want to increase it a bit more so that the op opacity is uh, is not that much decreased so you see that we are having uh, 
an effect over here like this so we can also ch change that so we can use the, uh, uh, the touchable opacity but now I want to identify that which item has been tapped so I can use uh, press on press event I can add that and I need to implement a method so that I want to identify this uh, key over here so let's add a touchable opacity a method on this touchable opacity and remove this item from the list uh, which are maintained in the react hook let's add on press event to remove the item so let's say let's call it remove item and we will send the item dot key so that we can identify through the key or search the item from the list using the key and I will add this remove item so in the remove item I am receiving uh, the key or I can call it item key and uh, through the item key I will uh, filter out the list and will change the items uh, or the remove item from the list and will update the list to do this I first need to filter out the items uh, based on key from the list so I can get a list of the items from the get list and I can use filter function which is a vanilla javascript function that is available with the arrays and uh, I want to filter out based on the uh, key so I will use the lambda expression to remove that so every item it would uh, be represented through the item and I will use item dot key for each item and I will compare with the key that is supplied as an argument so it will match and we'll look for and will return a list which uh, which does not contain this key this can be applied also on the uh, on the data as well but uh, we are uh, identifying through the key because data can duplicate because item 1 can uh, can be twice in the list so it will remove or return the list having uh, uh, without item 1 so I can uh, return this filter uh, return the list to the filter and let's do it in uh, two steps and I can combine it later on so this list would have uh, an items uh, which is actually removed I can actually do the console.log and see that how do we or what do we get in the list so right now we have two items in the list and if I go here and uh, if I press let's say for example item 3 so we are getting a list which has no item 3 so item 3 has been removed and we are getting or the list has been returned with the item 1 and we need to update our uh, list uh, which is a state maintained through the state and we will use the set list so set list and I am supplying the list a new updated list and after removing the item from the list so before I was just trying to access the item and we we're getting the list but I was not updating the state uh, with the new list so now if I refresh and if I press let's say for the item 1 it's removed from the list and the new updated list has been replaced with the help of set lists. so I can uh, when I press tab I can remove the item from the list in this way I can also make it the shorter and in the one way I can just comment that out for the later references if you want to look that later on I can use the lambda expression over here as well and uh, I can call it as a list and in this case uh, I can just paste this uh, 
and uh, in this case it's returning a list and all the list will be uh, replaced with this one and uh, I can do this so let's do the item like this and uh, I can remove that item and this item has been removed so I can also do this in this way to remove the item uh, instead of type tapping on the item I want to have a small icon uh, on the right side and if I tap on this uh, this item should be removed from the list uh, to do this <coughs> let's add some items so I want to have an, uh, a small uh, icon over here uh, this case I will just use a simple uh, text uh, I am not using any uh, any image over there so this is our text which is actually displayed and with the text I also want to display uh, let's say a view that should be containing the small text to remove the item let's say for example X the cross so I want to put this cross over there and uh, if I go and see uh, the items over here it's it has a padding and it, it has a width and item is not displayed because that view is by default if you recall is in a column uh, flex is flex direction is column so I need to change the flex direction to row from the column so that this x should go over there so it's displaying right right after the item and I can also apply the same uh, style uh, as I have applied because in the uh, in the text we don't have anything special I can use this and although the the size is a bit bigger so I can make it custom size later on and uh, how can I add spaces between these two child items of this view so this is a question so flex direction is uh, specified and how about if I add the justify content which is on the main axis in this case the main axis is horizontal so if I say the space between so now this X has been removed and moved over there and uh, I can add a small circle around so around so I can make it let's say cross text so let's make it another style <coughs> and uh, in this case I want to make it uh, white color and this is the style that is used for this so let's make it an inline style this time let's say for example background color as let's say gray and the border radius to let's say 50 something like this and uh, I can add some padding to let's say 5 so the size has been increased so let's decrease the font size to 16 and uh, the padding does not look so good so I can increase uh, width a bit so let's 
make it a bit nicer we can later on move into a separate style so now I need to uh, uh, justify the content so that it should uh, display in the center like this and uh, to justify the content along the uh, cross axis so I will make it center so now it looks better so I can give it a uh, different size a different uh, color let's say red color for the cross so that uh, looks like a crossing this or closing this or removing this and uh, I can also increase uh, or uh, make it font weight to make it bold so a little bit bold has been appeared and uh, I can move this style actually outside from this so I can call it uh, the cross text container so I will add this as a cross text container and I will use this style over here styles dot cross text container Uh, now I want to tap on this and I want to close this so right now uh, this touchable opacity is used for this and I want to use touchable opacity uh, with this one as well so I can wrap this with the touchable opacity so I will wrap this container touchable opacity so that it becomes touchable so we have a view with the container and it has a touchable opacity by itself so you see that it's touchable and uh, by tapping on this uh, it's not removed because I'm not tapping on this uh, outer container so if I tap on this it's giving me, me uh, feedback and I can actually uh, do this that I was doing over here in this touchable opacity I will do this in here now if I refresh and if I tap on the, this nothing will happen because on press has been removed but if I tap on this it's removed like this let's replace this button and make our custom button so we already know about the touchable opacity so we will use this and we'll add a view and text display the text on the button so uh, to display the text on the button we will add the text and now we have an option because uh, in this case add was uh, in a sentence case and it was showing in the upper case and I want to add a button with the uh, with the text let's say for example add like this and I will use uh, uh, touchable opacity and you see this add and let's give it some styles let's for example background color as uh, blue and uh, let's give some padding and uh, similarly for the text I want to add some style with the text and the first thing that I want to do is the color which is I want to make it rich white color 
and similarly the font size to make it a bit bigger let's say 20 and if I want similar button I can do this so let's comment this out for a moment and if I want to add uh, borders border radius I will add border radius to let's say 50 similarly I will add some horizontal padding so padding horizontal I will add some more padding on both sides so make it uh, look a bit better similarly if I tap on this I can handle this touchable opacity with the active opacity option and uh, by default it's 0.2 so let's make it 0.5 Like this so that's how I can customize and add my own button instead of using the default one so let's move this into a separate file so I will go and add a new folder and call it components and I will add a file let's say for example button component.js and inside that file I will move this uh, entire code so I will just cut from here I will first make some imports from the react and the import that I want is react and also I need some imports from the uh, uh, from the react native and I can export this or maybe I can make a function make it uh, my button make arrow function and this is a function based component therefore it will have a return and it will be returning this one and I can make an imports and add an import statement for the react native modules and in this I am using touchable opacity view text and I will be using style sheet as well so I will use styles with the help of style sheet object so I will add these styles over here instead of uh, having inline styles so it's not a good approach so I will move this object which is style object and I will call it button container and let's make it in separate lines so that looks better so I will use styles dot button container sorry and for the text I will also use another style and I can say that styles dot button text I remove that so let's bring it back
so now I have to uh, use this so over here so if I save this my button is gone I need to import that button which is my button or I can call it a custom button or anything I want to so let's say for example custom button and I need to export this with the help of export default custom button and now I need to import this button over here before the component starts so it's uh, inside components and its button component and its name is custom button so I will use custom button over here so here is my button with the help of touchable opacity but the problem is that button is uh, having hard coded uh, text which means that uh, my button should be a bit flexible and reusable so that I can send the text in font size and the background color and so on so we can send all these from the props from here as a property and I can receive this inside my component so uh, let's see we can how we can do this so first begin with the text so I want to add, send a text from here which for example uh, uh, make it a bit different so that I can differentiate I can receive uh, props over here this is a function based component uh, and uh, I will be able to uh, use these props over here and I want to use these props and from the, these props I want to access the text property so if I save this so whatever text will be sent it will be displayed like this in this uh, uh, in this button similarly if I want to uh, do some more things let's say for example background color so I can also send that and I can use it over there and I can modify this component according to my own desire so let's see how we can do this so to add more customization in our button so that I can change the font size, I can change the uh, button color, uh, I can send all those properties uh, through the uh, props, uh, for the component props and I can receive everything in the uh, as a props object. So let's change the color and uh, define a new prop, let's say for example I am sending the red color and I want to uh, make my component like this so that whoever sends what type of color uh, it should change so by default it's blue and uh, it's because defined over here so uh, I will change it a bit and uh, I will uh, remove it from here but I don't want to change the other properties so I can actually merge the styles together and uh, I can uh, create a new object which is uh, a style object and I will keep the other properties which are already defined through that uh, style object and I will add the background color which is received through the prop so props dot color if I save this I receive this and I modify this but how about if uh, the the user or the caller of this component uh, does not provide any color so for example I don't specify any color so you see it's uh, gone and uh, it's not uh, visible uh, because the text color is white and uh, there is no background color so just like in the default uh, button we have in react native it has a default background color so we can also have this uh, feature with our uh, own component 
in this case we can check that if the user has provided this prop or not so let's have a variable that can store the color so if the color is not undefined so we actually use the uh, color prop otherwise sorry I'm using it in the wrong way so otherwise uh, let's make it blue in this way so if uh, color prop is not supplied it should be uh, it should be blue and I can use this btn color and it's the blue and uh, if if someone supplies the the color through the string it will be set to this otherwise it would be a default color similarly we can also do this with the uh, with the text because we have a text color and we have a font size we can also provide this customization with this which means that we will not be using this uh, object uh, instead we are actually using the props so to do this we can uh, have a font size prop which can be received from the props object let's say for example size or I can make it a bit different such as uh, text size and other one can be the color prop which is props dot text color all right so i can use this to uh, set the style object and definitely i need to do this in this way and now i can send the text size prop in this case uh, that is let's say for example uh, sorry, 12 and text color as a string so let's say for example uh, make it it's black right now so make it white So I can send the text size so let's increase the size a bit make it 20 so I can increase the text size I can change the text color to some other color so I can send this through the props so now I can use this uh, as some uh, customization and I can receive things as a prop over here and again again the problem is that if we don't have a text size as a prop and we don't have a text color as a prop so uh, by having this we are uh, will not be able to set that and it will be using the default black color and default size and I think default size is uh, 12 so uh, we don't have any problem with this so but if user want to customize this uh, user can send these props and our uh, button component is a bit customized now and uh, we'll be using and uh, a bit customization and we can also send this uh, active opacity if we want to do that uh, but otherwise it's uh, working fine and uh, the th second thing is that how can we uh, set the text because if I add some item over here and if I add this nothing will happen because there is no on press event and this is just the design of the button so let's see how we can do that so as you can see that uh, we are maintaining state over here and we are maintaining a list of uh, items 
and uh, when we add an item or we perform this uh, uh, this function uh, through the on press event it's actually retrieving the item through the get text and adding into the in the list so we want to trigger this add item function from this component which means that we want to trigger and call this function uh, from this uh, touchable opacity on press event so to do this it's uh, quite easy it's not difficult just we need to understand that how it works so let's make it a bit uh, viewable so we are sending different props so these are the custom props that we defined these props whoever is going to use this component will be using those props and can perform these things and customize the button we can also create a prop for our event so i can call it on press event so i name it a bit different so that we can differentiate so on press event is a prop that can be received over here inside our component inside this prop and for this we can associate a function or we can provide a, a function reference over here in this case we have add item so this prop when we are using this uh, this component so it has a prop on press event and on press event prop has a reference to the function which is in the in the parent uh, component which is the app component so this function is in the parent component and we are sending this inside this uh, through a prop so we can receive this function and we can call this function from the child component so we are receiving the prop and we can have it over here in on press and I can use props dot on press event so on press event is the prop over here and uh, this prop has the the function reference and as soon as I uh, on the press of this uh, touchable opacity uh, it is calling this function which is I am getting through the props so on props event it has the reference of this uh, function which is in the parent component so if I save this I add an item you see that I can do that so add item is passing over here and on press is actually performed inside this uh, component through the touchable opacity which means that now we can reuse this component uh, as we want and other functionality is definitely not part of this component so uh, other things would be working like the way they were working before so but the thing is that now our uh, button is customized and uh, we are no more using this button and I can remove this if I want to so that's all about the uh, states props and the custom component that we developed passing the prop from our parent component when we are actually calling this and we are uh, also calling the uh, the parent uh, component function and uh, this is what we did with the touchable opacity and we can also implement some more features so this is a small task for you that if I tap on this uh, the text is displayed on this text box and I should have a update button over here or this button should be named as update so if I update so the item should be updated when I press an update button over here and similarly if this button is uh, enabled so I should not be able to add an empty item so it should be disabled so when I add something it should be 
uh, enabled so this is something that you can play around and work with this